for two. Why? Was, there's a theory now that if you're down 14 late, you go for two mm -hmm. because it, uh, uh, you're going to have to score two touchdowns anyway. It eliminates the chance of the other team to go for two. It's like a whole game theory. Mm. Prisoner's okay. dilemma. Isn't there also a segment that Van Pelt does on that type of stuff that yes. happened last night? Yes. Take it away, Scott <laughs> and Brady on a third and seven. The Eagles trying to get off the field and win this game. You got the feeling if this is dropped or broken up, Jalen Hurts is going to get him in the end zone again. They were cooking on offense. But Brady just slowly chokes you out, and then on the third and one, I got it. Good night. Everybody, go home, drive safely, enjoy your uh, warm beds, because we're getting on a plane and flying back to Tampa. We're going to take a few knees, and we are out of here. I'm 44. I threw another two touchdown passes. How do you like that? I'm 5-1, and one, too. 28 to 22. Eagles gave us a, a little thrill at the end, but again, 2-4. and four. And afterwards, how thrilled was the Thursday Night Football crew to be joined by Devin White? who was Devin White and said, you know what? Any given Sunday, Monday, or Thursday. Take it away, guys. Coming into a game, we get everybody best shot now. That, that's the main thing. Like, teams are playing us so hard. Like, you know, we go back and we watch film. We like, it's not the same team that showed up. But that's the thing that we say. It's an any given Sunday, Monday, or Thursday lead. So you got to bring it. You know, we can't roll the dice out and be like, hey, you know, you finna play us. We finna beat you. You know, we got to bring it. You know, it's got to be a mentality for four quarters because we could have easily let this game slip. And then we'll be like, dang, what we could have done. But we find ways to win. That's what great teams do. And they win. They're the defending champs. They're off to a 5-1 and one start. Tom Brady looks incredible. And they won in different ways without Tom Brady's arm. They used Leonard Fournette. So now they've won 13 of their last 14 games dating back to last season. They sit at 5-1. and one. I ask you guys, who are the lead dogs in the NFC right now? I'm sure there's some Arizona Cardinals fans out there mm -hmm. watching mm -hmm. thinking, yeah, hello, we're undefeated. Is it the Bucks or the Cardinals? Oh, it's not even close, in, in my opinion. And it's the Bucks. <laughs> you know, it's, it, and... and you hear Devin White sit there and tell you, we're getting everybody's best shot. The team that shows up on film necessarily isn't the team that shows up on game day, okay. right, that we're playing against. You know, I played on some, you know, not so great football teams, and we have beat the eventual Super Bowl champs, one, one, you know, in Washington over the stretch. It was probably a four-year run where we beat every Super Bowl champ. Yeah. That's during the regular season, Okay. And we probably won four or five games. Uh -huh. But it was because we knew that that team was coming in. That's the measuring stick. Obviously, everybody's going to be talking about mm. that team and how they respond. And we wanted to go out there and give them our best shot. I wish we could have consistently done it more, but it just didn't happen. So to Devin White's point, absolutely, this is going to be a Bucks team that's going to be battle Tested. We all, we've already talked about all the injuries in the secondary on the defense, even more injuries on offense. They don't have Gronk, who probably, you know, just because of the chemistry and connection, probably would have made some of those plays O.J. Howard did not make. Yeah. Even though O.J. Howard is an athletic beast, um, he still doesn't quite understand how to play the position. I saw him getting thrown out the club a couple times. We, talk, <laughs> we, we, call, we call throwing out the club is when you go to block somebody <laughs> on the edge and you're holding that edge and they just throw you out the way. They ain't throwing Gronk out the way, believe that. But they, they you know, they threw O.J. Howard a couple times. Um, but yeah, in my opinion, yeah. you know, it is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're battle-tested. I believe mm. in them. That leader, number 12, TB. D'Angelo, have you ever actually been thrown out wow. of a club? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, an uh, actual nightclub. No, 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 not an actual <laughs> nightclub. But I've been thrown out of you sporting events. Um, oh, really? I've been thrown out of the actual trying to go hit that pulling tackle, thrown oh out gosh. the club. Yeah, it happens to even the best of us. My I'm man. As a dad now, of your kids playing football, have you ever been kicked out of a game? Not yet? Not, not, a, not a football game. I've been <laughs> kicked out of basketball. I've been kicked out really? of uh, baseball. Yeah, yeah. I hate when they're calling them strikes, and they not strikes, <laughs> ref. Up, oh, that's Great not call. a strike, man. <laughs> Talk to a San Francisco Giants fan this morning. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Man, There's always one dad who has to watch from the car, you know, because he's, like, been ejected. <laughs> it's brutal. There's, there's Glenn got in the car. Walking out there. Back the window. That's me. Oh, my God. Um, it's actually a good transition because I, um, I, I always like that our friend Dan Hansis, who does the power rankings, always says they're not power standings, they're power rankings. Mm -hmm. Meaning, yes, the Cardinals have the best record in the NFL, and I totally respect it, and they're a really cool story. But I'm going with the Bucks based on a lot of reasons. I think that they are a better, greater team. If they met head-to-head, -head, I would choose the Bucks. All the playoff experience, none for Arizona. Um, but I also, there's something going on, like, generationally with Tampa, of course, and they're almost feeling like a little bit of a dynasty. And I bring up Exhibit A for this reason. I have my own seven-and-a-half-year-old son, and for the first time ever in my life, he came to me and he said, 
Dad, I want a jersey. I want a jersey. All the boys are wearing jerseys. What jersey should I get? And so I go, well, there's so many. There's so many great young quarterbacks. You can get a Dak jersey. You can get a Kyler jersey. There's so many. In the NFC, you can get it. He says, I want to talk to my friends. Goes to school, second in New York. Goes to school, <laughs> comes back, and his friends tell him the answer. Bring up the jersey that my seven-year-old son who lives in New York decided to get. A 12 yeah. Tampa Bay Buccaneers jersey. A 44-year-old man who, not relatable necessarily to a young person, and yet he is. Calvin resoundingly said the Tampa Bay jersey because he understands the power. And there was a whole conference about it at lunch, and the kids talked about it. And it was, it was Tristan and Pierce and Pierre, and they all said 12 Brady, and they're all getting them. That's only one of the reasons I think the Bucs are going to great things, and an important reason. I love that. Calvin yeah. looks awesome. So he does look pretty cool. cool. He's very happy. That is a cool jersey, and I love that he's rocking the Brady. I'm going to make the quick case for the Cardinals. Please do. They kicked the snot out of the Rams, and the Rams kicked the snot out of the Bucks. Sure. So you do this, like, transitive theory, and you're like, well, if that team no. beats this team... But at the end of the day, it's like the Cardinals, at, at, six weeks into the season, I can't say that they're the favorite. If they were to play right now in Arizona in a playoff game, I'm taking Brady because the Kyler and those guys, they haven't been there yet. I think there's something to the institutional knowledge of we have been down this road, we have been there. And my last point on it, Kyle, mm -hmm. I knew you were showing that photo today. Really? The producers gave me a heads up. They said, I said, what's Kyle talking about? They're like, he's actually got a cute picture of his son. Um, and I said, I got one also. Are you going to mail this out? Let me tell you what, you what happened Kyler yesterday. Jersey? My son is like, what's the game tonight? He can't stay up for these games. What's the game tonight? I said, it's on NFL Network where daddy works. And it's going to be Tom Brady versus the Philadelphia Eagles. Know. Who's going to win? He says, the Pirates are going to win. He calls the Buccaneers the, the Pirates. Pirates. Sure, yeah. And then he went into his room. He put on a shirt. Let's see evidence. What's be he here for the segment. What do we got Ronaldo? here? There we go. crazy that this whole other generation is rocking my son's four years old and is wearing a jersey of a man 40 years older than him <laughs> and that was kyle when i heard you were going calvin with the bucks i'm like awesome. my son was wearing one too incredible again That's new cool. york city his <laughs> grandfather is a giants fan his other grandfather's a ravens fan there's no connection to tampa bay he wanted the brady jersey when we were mm -hmm. talking football this is what it is. It's the Brady effect. It's generational. It's awesome. And I think when it comes down to it, I think if you were to ask me, who's the one guy you trust in the trenches and it's, it's you know, fourth and ten or whatever, it's still Brady. Uh -huh. It's yeah. crazy. Uh -huh. It's still Brady. Good morning. I feel Mel's hair is incredible. Yeah, <laughs> it's longer than ever. Maybe. No, don't do it. I love it. <laughs> I, this is the one show, D'Angelo, where we decide who the lead dog is in conferences <laughs> per like children's right. jersey preferential Jer choice. Jersey request. Why not? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Why yeah. not? Let's bring it. Ian Rappaport, uh, Ian, you've got two. What are they? Are they rocking? Are they rocking uh, Tom Brady jerseys, my friend? Uh, close. Here are the jerseys that we have at our house: Joey Bosa, uh, okay. Travis Kelsey. We got like Herbert, it. and we got Mahomes. I was gonna say Herbert. And, and uh, I think right. an old okay. Darnold from the Jets. Okay. All right, sure. All well, right. we'll talk about the AFC. This was an NFC discussion, but Ian, thank you for being here. Richard Sherman left the game early last night. This, I mean, we're talking about how they're their lead dogs, their secondary somehow obliterated, yet somehow they're winning games. Without them, how about him? How about Daniel Jones? How about Christian McCaffrey? Give us some updates for week six. Richard Sherman was Richard Sherman was brought into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers when they had a significant group of injuries to the cornerback position just to give some help. And now he has an injury. He pulled up lame yesterday with a hamstring injury, was quickly ruled out of the game. He's going to have an MRI today. From what I understand, it doesn't seem too serious, although uh, the expectation is that Richard Sherman is going to miss some time, I was told, probably a couple weeks. Now, they got the little mini buy here. Hopefully, it's maybe just two games. Seems like he's okay, but obviously, we'll be monitoring that going forward. Another injury we have been tracking, Daniel Jones, the Giants quarterback. He's in the NFL's concussion protocol after that hit right there. But some good news. He was a limited participant in practice yesterday. He is now on track to play on Sunday, provided he has no setbacks. This is good news for the Giants. And, of course, he cannot be cleared until the independent neurologist has his say. And finally, for the Carolina Panthers, Christian McCaffrey. Been dealing with a hamstring injury for about two and a half weeks. They thought it was going in the right direction. He was expected to at least push to try to play on Sunday. Then it was a DNP yesterday, just did not feel 100%. They don't know when he is going to feel 100%. We'll see what happens today, but not a very good sign at all for Sunday. 
fantasy owners looking at Devontae Booker and uh, of Khalil Herbert, of course, of Chicago up against the Packers to fill in for Christian McCaffrey. Ian, who is that calling you? Is it Tom Brady's people mm. mad that you don't have his jersey? <laughs> Uh, no, but I have another story, Jersey story. You want to hear it? Yeah, yeah of course. Obviously. Okay. So I was in L.A. Uh, at Chargers camp, and I saw Joey Bosa there. And, you know, Bosa and I aren't text buddies, so I was like, let me just take the opportunity to mention to him what happened. So I told him that my son Jude has a Bosa jersey. And I told him about the time when Jude was running in the house with socks on, slipped, fell, busted his chin open, needed a couple stitches and literally bled all over his Bosa jersey. And I got a picture of it. Mm. So I showed it to Joey. He was extremely excited to see blood all over his jersey. And he said, yeah. you tell Jude to keep being crazy. I was like, I will tell him that. Ah, I love that's that. awesome. <laughs> Love you, Ian. Appreciate the story. Yeah. I mean, that's that was 